wave at myself. Hi. <laughs> so I can record it because I never record these things. So I get to see what's going on. Hello, self. How are you? It's so nice to see you. You're very handsome. Thank you. So are you. Now, did you know, according to this story that I was researching, and it's a story that comes from Africa, from the country of Ghana in Western Africa, according to this story, once, a long, long, long time ago, there were, in fact, no stories. Yeah, there were no stories at all. All of the stories were squished up, stuffed together, and scrunched down in one basket. And they were all owned by one person. And that was Nyame, the ruler of the sky. And he lived up in the sky, and he held on to all of the stories. What? So everybody down on Earth, they had a dull time of it, because there were no stories about I'm anyone sorry, or I'm anything. Which is a bummer, right? He's going to get picked up. Thank you. Because we all like to hear stories. What? The animals, they would get together when they would get together in the evening around the water hole, and they'd drink water and relax and talk. They had no stories to tell. Finally, they got tired of it. They said, why does Nyame up there have all of the stories and there are none for us? We should be able to find a way to get them. Somebody who could reach all the way up to the sky should be able to go up and get them. Or, or an animal who was very, very tall. Like a giraffe. They all looked at giraffe. They said, giraffe, your neck goes way up. You eat off, off the very tops of the trees. Couldn't you go to Nyame and ask him for the stories? And Giraffe said, Oh, oh, I don't know. Giraffe. Just because my neck is long. <laughs> but the animals, they all cried out, Come on, you can do it. In fact, they said, Stretch out your neck and go up to the sky. Stretch out <laughs> your neck and go up to the sky. Can you say that with me? No. Let's try it out. Here we go, here we go. They, he said, Stretch out your neck. And go up to the sky. Stretch out your neck. And go up to the sky. Stretch out your neck. And go up to the sky. That was really good. In fact, as all the animals were saying that, Giraffe, she got excited. She said, I think I can do it. Are you all behind me? And they all said, Yes! So, Giraffe, stretch. She stretched her neck past the tops of the trees, up toward the clouds, until finally her neck was sticking out up above the sky. And there, seated on his throne in his long gold robe with his big kufti kafi hat, there was Nyame, the ruler of the sky. He saw a giraffe and he said, Giraffe, O oh long of neck, why have you come? And then Giraffe was scared. Nyame was big and frightening. She looked down at the earth. She said, are you all with me? And the animals all said, yeah! OK, I can do it. Oh, Nyame, ruler of the sky, the animals have sent me here to ask you if you will share your stories. <laughs> share my stories? I don't sell them cheaply or easily. But you might sell them? Come here and I will tell you. Giraffe leaned her neck in and Nyame whispered in her ear. She said, oh, no one can do that. That's impossible. What did he say? And Nyame said, then go. What did he say? Do I don't have money? Giraffe got back down. And the animals all said, did you get them? Did you get the stories? Did you get them? And the giraffe said, I couldn't. What he asked for is impossible. The animals all said, oh, come on. We've got to have some stories. Surely somebody else could go for us. Somebody, maybe not who's tall, but somebody who's strong. Elephant. Everybody looked around to elephant. 
And they all said, Elephant, you're strong. Your trunk is long. Your legs are thick. You could go and get the stories. And Elephant said, <laughs> How would I do that? How will I get up to the sky? I can't stretch my neck out. The animals all said, You could climb the mountain. The mountain goes all the way up to the clouds. From there you could talk to him. And he said, I don't know. And the animals, they cried out, Climb up the mountain and go up to the sky. Climb up the mountain and go up to the sky. Climb up the mountain and go up to the sky. And the elephant said, I think I can do it. What do you think? Are you behind me? And they all said, Yeah! So elephant headed up the mountain. Do you know what? The mountain was very, very tall. Oh, it was a very long walk up the mountain. But he went up past the trees. He went up past the clouds. And there at the top of the mountain, he saw Nyame, the ruler of the sky, seated on his golden throne with his yellow robes and his kufti coffee hat. And Nyame said, Elephant! Long of trunk and strong of leg. Why have you come? Oh, he trumpeted out. <laughs> he was suddenly very, very scared. He looked down the mountain and called out, Are you all with me? Yeah! Then I can do it. Oh, Nyame, ruler of the sky, the animals have sent me to ask you to share your stories. <laughs> share my stories. I do not sell them cheap or easily. But you will sell them. Come here. And Yame whispered in his ear. What? I'm so off the mountain. What do you <laughs> No one can do that. It's That's impossible. Like then go. And poor elephant tumbled all the way back down the mountain. Boom, 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 boom. When he got there, the animals all said, Did you get them? Did you get the stories? And elephant said, oh, No. What he asked is impossible. The animal said, Oh, no. Our tall giraffe and our strong elephant can't get the stories. How will we ever get any stories? Well, one after another after another, they eliminated all the ideas for animals until finally they heard a very tiny voice. And it said, I think I can do it. I think I can go. The it's animals looked around and looked around and it's a mouse. There on the leaf of a tree was a spider. Oh, I know, spiders gross me out too. I'm scared of them. But this spider. This spider's name was Anansi. Oh and if you know any stories that come from Africa, you know lots of them are about this little spider, Anansi. He may have been tiny, but he was smart. He said, I think I can do it. I think I can find a way to get the stories. And the animals all said, but you're so little. You're not strong or tall. Nobody said you had to be strong or tall. I will go. How will you get there? I'll make a web. I'll use my web, and I'll make a ladder, and then I'll climb up to the sky. The animals cheered, and they all said, make a web and climb up to the sky. And make a web and climb up to the sky. Make a web and climb up to the sky. As he was going, he could hear the animals below him. He climbed, and he climbed, and he climbed, past the tops of the trees, past the clouds, until finally, there he was. And there in front of him on his great throne was Niame, with his yellow robes and his golden kufti coffee hat. And he said, you, little tiny Anansi, why have you come? Oh, great Niame, ruler of the sky. The animals have sent me to ask you to share your stories. Yeah. 
<laughs> you! You who are so little! You are not tall or strong! Anansi was getting scared now. He looked down at the ground and called out, Are you with me? Yeah. Yeah. Then I can do it! Oh, Niame, no one said you had to be tall or strong to get the stories. I will not sell them easily or cheaply. How will you sell them? Come close. But Anansi, he was so little, he didn't have big ears to whisper in. So Niame said, there are four things I want. I want you to bring me Onini, the snake with the long tail. I want you to bring me a tooth from Osebo, the leopard. I want you to bring me Momboro, the hornets that sting like fire. And most importantly, I want you to bring me Moisha, the invisible fairy. Anansi was scared. But how can I do this? But he said, It's a deal, Niame. I will bring you those four things. He didn't know how, and all the way down his web ladder, he was trying to decide how he would get them. As he got down to the bottom, the animals all crowded around. They said, did you get them? Did you get the stories? Well, no. Oh. But I know how. Oh. Yame wants four things. He wants Onini, the snake with the long tail. He wants a tooth from Osebo, the leopard with the sharp, sharp fangs. He wants the hornets that sting like fire. And most importantly, he wants Moesia, the invisible fairy. The animals all said, oh no! These are strong, awful things. How will we ever get them? And Anansi said, we can't on our own. But if we work together, we can. Uh, in Swahili, one of the languages in Africa, there's a word. Uh, the word is Arambe. And Arambe means pull together. It means work together. And the animals started to sing. Anansi led off the song. He, he, he sang out Arambe. And all the animals yelled back, pull together. If I was to do that, could you yell back, pull together? Yeah. Let's see. I, if I was to go, Arambe means pull together. Arambe means pull together. Arambe means pull together as one. Arambe means pull Arambe means pull Arambe means pull together as one. Hey, that was pretty good. And the animals got working together and they came up with a plan. The first thing they had to capture was the snake. The snake was big. The snake was scary and the snake was strong. The animals feared him. But Anansi called his wife Asa. He said, Aso, come here. Aso. Aso went and she grabbed the hedgehog. And she and hedgehog stood underneath the tree where Onini was asleep. And they began to argue. Aso, she said, my husband Anansi, he says that Onini the snake is not as long as he says he is. Hedgehog said, oh, that's ridiculous. Onini is the biggest snake there is. No, no, no. My husband says that he's not even as long as this log right here. Don't be ridiculous. He's as big as anything. No, he's not. Yes, he is. No, he's not. Yes, he is. <laughs> they were so loud that Onini woke up. He stretched his long head down and he said, Say, what's all this racket? Oh, oh, hello. Look, we're sorry to bother you, but my husband and I, we're having an argument with Hedgehog here. My husband says that you are not really as long as you say you are. What? I agree. I think you're very long. I think you're the longest snake there is. They're silly. See, we can't agree at all. So, Onini, we don't know how to tell if you're longer than this log. This log? I tell you what, I'll come down. So the snake uncoiled himself and he came down the tree. 
and he lay by the log. <coughs> there you see, look at that. He's not nearly as long as the log. Well, of course he's not. He's all curved up. You gotta straighten out some more. So the snake straightened out a little bit more. You see, there he is. He's not as long as the log. <laughs> well, that's because he's still all curvy. Look, if we're gonna win this argument, Donini, I'm gonna have to tie you to the log so you'll be nice and flat. <laughs> and so quickly they tied him to the law, good and tight. And as soon as he was tied up, they said, A Nazi, a Nazi, quick, come on, take him up to Niami! <laughs> and a Nazi took the snake up to Niami. <laughs> and they had gotten rid of one of the most awful things in the forest, in the process. The animals were so excited, they cried out, they said, We got one done! We're going to get the stories. We got one done! We're gonna get the story. We got one done. We're gonna get the stories. And then Anansi said, We got one done, but we still have three to go. The next one was a tooth from Osebo, the leopard. And he was fast, his claws were sharp, his jaws were strong, and his teeth were fierce. They paced back and forth, trying to think of what they could do. Anansi got an idea. He called on hedgehog and porcupine and squirrel and rabbit and otter, all the animals that could dig well. And he said, animals, we've got to dig. We've got to dig a deep, deep hole. And so the animals got together and they dug and they dug and they dug and they dug and they dug. And they dug, and they dug. So they had a deep hole. Anansi and the other animals covered it with branches and leaves. And then they waited. As the sun started to go down, they could hear. As Osebo, the leopard came stalking along, looking for something to eat. Anansi said, quick, rabbit, go over on the other side of the hole and pretend like you're scared. I don't have to pretend I am scared. What if he eats me? You'll be fine. So rabbit went over to this side of the hole. Leopard was over on the other side. And rabbit said, oh dear. Here I am, a frightened little rabbit. <laughs> I can't run away. I hope some leopard doesn't see me and hope that I would make a nice appetizer. <laughs> and from across the pit, the leopard went. That looks like a tasty appetizer. And you could see his muscles tense. And the leopard sprang and went running straight for the rabbit. Poor rabbit was going. <laughs> and then kaboom! Leopard disappeared as he fell straight down into the hole. As he fell in the hole, he whacked his head against one side of it, and do you know what happened? One of his teeth fell out. Anansi scampered up to the side of the hole, he took one of his webs, and he went, I'll just relieve you of that, if you don't mind. And he went running straight up his web ladder to Niame. The animals were so excited they started to sing. They sang out, We got two done! We're gonna get the stories! We got two done! We're gonna get the stories! We got two done! We're gonna get the stories! They were so excited. Anansi said, We're almost there. Only two left. What's the next one? The hornets that sting like fire. Who will help me get those? And the animals all went. <laughs> and they ran away to hide. No one wanted to face the hornets. They lived high in the tree in their nest, and they were scary because they stung and it hurt. They all thought, what will we do? Who will help? And suddenly, out from the bottom of the tree came little tiny hedgehog, who was only this big. And Hedgehog said, I'm not very big, but if I can help, I will. And Anansi said, I have a perfect idea. Go and get a big calabash gourd from the garden. So they went and they found a big calabash gourd. They put a hole in it. They shook out all the seeds, and it was empty. Anansi found a cork that would just fit over the hole. He pulled out the cork and he gave it. He gave the gourd to Hedgehog, and he said, Hedgehog, 
Hedgehog went over underneath the net. He had the gourd with him and he said, My, my, my! I think it looks like rain. I've heard that there's going to be a terrible rainstorm. Up in the nest he heard. <laughs> Out came some hornets. They looked down and they saw the hedgehog and they said, zzz, 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 zzz. Look, it's a hedgehog. Should we sting him? Hedgehog said, no, no, no. I just came to tell you there's going to be a terrible rainstorm. I think I can hear it starting far off. We don't care about rain. We have a good nest. No, 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 it's going to rain so hard, your nest might flood. Bzz, we don't believe you. The other animals were off in the forest, and they were working together. Let's see, um, you all right here? Can I borrow you for just a second? Yeah. Yeah. Would you guys start to go like this for me? Oh, that's very good. All of you start doing that now. And then, you in the back, keep going like this. You in the front, if you can snap your fingers, start to snap your fingers. Everybody start snapping your fingers. In the back, if you can slap your legs, go ahead and start slapping your legs. Everybody! Oh, what a fearsome rain! Let me hear a good boom! like all the rain in the world was falling at once. And the hornet said, oh no, we'll be drowned. What will we do? And Hedgehog said, fly down into the calabash. I'll keep you safe. And so straight out from the nest came hundreds and hundreds of hornets and they flew straight down into the calabash. And when the last one was inside, Anansi jammed the cork in. Oh, they were mad. You could hear them going zzz, 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 from inside. But Anansi took them straight up his web ladder to the island. The animals were so excited they sang out. They said, we got three done. We're going to get the story. We got three done. We're going to get the story. We got three done. We're going to get the story. Anansi was so excited he got back down. He said, now, there's only one left. And that's going to be the hardest one, Moesha, the invisible fairy. The animal said, how will we catch her? She's invisible. But then a squirrel, he said, da, 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 say, doesn't she, doesn't she, doesn't she, doesn't she dance under the tree every day at noon? Yeah. And I said, yes. And it'll be noon in just a little while. Anansi got an idea. He said, Moesha loves yams. Many of you like yams? Sweet potatoes? I love sweet potatoes. And Moesha, she loves sweet potatoes. So Anansi said, he said, uh, Rabbit, go dig up some sweet potatoes. And then he looked at Squirrel. Squirrel, gather some banana leaves to put them on. Otter, you and Porcupine, go down to the pitch, which is a big puddle of thick, black, sticky tar. And bring up some tar and some pitch. It sticks to everything. They put it on roofs. And they used to make oil. It's nasty and sticky and gross. They brought up a big clump of it. And Nancy said, now quick, make it look like a bunny rabbit. And so they shaped that pitch into a little bunny rabbit. And they put it underneath the tree. And they put the yams right there on the banana leaves. And all the animals hid. And sure enough, just about noon, they couldn't see anything, but they could hear the sound of someone who tap danced very badly. And they knew that she had come up to the tree. Pretty soon they heard a voice. The voice said, my word, look at them yams. Those just look like the tastiest things I ever did see. Do you mind if I have some of your yams? Anansi moved the head on the little pitch rabbit, so it shook its head yes. Why, thank you so much. The banana leaves were picked up by an invisible hand, and the yams disappeared. When they were all gone, the invisible fairy said, thank you very much. The rabbit didn't say anything. Excuse me, I said thank you very much. It was nice of you to give me those. 
Now, see here. I'm from a civilized place. Whenever somebody says thank you, you should say you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> now, look here. If you aren't going to have some manners, I'm going to teach you some manners. I'm going to say thank you. If you don't say you're welcome, I'm going to give you a smack. <laughs> thank you. All right, you asked for it. And all of a sudden, the tar rabbit went whack. But then it moved again as the fairy said, hey, you let go of me now. Let go of me. She was stuck. If you don't let go of me, I'll give it to you with the other hand. Smack. Oh, hey, hey, you let go. You let go, I said, right now, or I'll give you a kick. The animals watched as that pitch rabbit jumped and flumped and flooped and whooped until finally the fairy was so caught up in it that she couldn't move at all. And Anansi grabbed it and took it straight up to the sky. And with the delivery of the fairy, Niame turned over the basket for the stories. And Anansi brought them down. And the stories were opened up and they spread all over the world. And that, apparently, is why there are stories all over the world. And that's how Anansi brought the story. <laughs>